contour lines are lines that trace along um, locations of equal elevation or depth. And in fact, some of the earliest contours, such as this map from 1730, didn't measure how high mountains were, but measured how deep rivers or, um, or shorelines were. And um, this is actually a little bit easier to measure downward into a river or into an um, ocean than it is to measure upward, because all you really need to do in order to measure downward to find the how far something is below sea level or water level is to just have some sort of weight on a string and some sort of way to measure the string, and then a lot of um, measurements can be taken in that way, and you can start getting points of elevation underwater. But measuring elevation on top of the water is a little trickier because we have to measure up from sea level. So in this example here, we have the ocean here, and the ocean is touching the land along, the, along this line where blue turns to green. If we traced out that same line on a map, we would see a map like this zero, um, zero contour of elevation. However, then if sea level rose by 50, by 50 meters, then, um, I'm sorry, by 50 feet, then this whole land would be flooded here, and now we would have a line where the dark green changes to light green here, and that would be our 50-foot um, elevation contour. And if, the sea, if water or sea level rose another 50 feet, then we would get this last contour here. So we can see that for an island like this, contours would almost be a bullseye sort of pattern. Um, contours typically don't sit on top of each other unless it's a um, vertical cliff. And they don't typically cross each other, at least for how we'll talk about contours. They could with an overhanging cliff or caves or that sort of thing. But we like to think of, of elevation as just one smooth continuous surface and something that can easily be represented on a digital elevation model. So how do we actually make contours? We do this by a method called interpolation, where we, um, we estimate the values between no, known points. So for example here, if we wanted to draw a contour line at 100 feet above sea level, we can draw a line that looks like this. This line does go through the one 100 foot point we have, so it honors that data, but everywhere else it's just estimating the data. It knows that there must be a 100 foot value between 95 and 110 feet, so it just puts it about a third of the way there. And between 80 and 105 feet, it's gonna be much closer to the 105. So by um, interpolating all those points in between and then drawing one smooth continuous line that honors the 100, um, the 100 foot point, and all the other interpolated points, we get a smooth contour line. When we look at contours, sometimes one of the contour lines is darker than the others. These are usually the round numbers, so if this is a 20-foot contour interval, um, we might have five contours between the darker lines, and each of the darker lines would be an even 100 feet, 400, 500, 600 feet. Um, sometimes we want to show a little more detail between contours, and we'll put on a dashed line like this. Other than that, all of the solid lines here represent the contour interval. So that contour interval in this case might once again be 20 feet. So every time we climb up here from 400 feet up another 20 feet, we would expect to cross this contour line. And the next one after 420 would be 440, 460, 480, and finally the 500 foot contour here. These on dash contours are called supplementary contours, and the dark contours that highlight the round, nice round numbers, like 400 and 500, are called index contours. So with contours, we can do some things. If we wanted to, we could calculate slope. We would just put on a line that crosses all of the contours at a right angle. We would measure the distance of this, of this brown line here. That would be the run. And then we would take the difference between the elevation value of 300 and the elevation value of 200, and that would be the rise. So in this case here, there would be 100 feet of rise, and we would measure the run based on the um, scale of the map, and we could calculate what the, um, what the slope in the area was. And we can also use that same line to calculate the aspect. So in this case here, we measure aspect from north, this is pointing in the um, direction of steepest downslope. 
which is this direction here, because we're crossing all of these contours at a right angle. And now the only thing we need to do is measure an angle starting at north and coming in a clockwise direction until we get to that brown line there. This would be 90, this would be 180, so we're somewhere between these. That might be an angle of about um, 140.